My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Lift your hands toward heaven. If you know you are not responsible for where you are, if you know you are not the one causing yourself to go forward, if you know it's not a man lifting you up, but it is God, come on, lift your hands and worship this God. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him your gratitude. Mm. Oh, hey, ha. appreciate God until you have headache as simple as headache is and headache robs you of sleep you try everything you know and suddenly you will discover that headache is a mountain you will not appreciate God until you see how many people die from headache then you will see how ungrateful we can be Without God, man is weak. He said, without me, you can do nothing. That means outside of God, your name is nothing. Everything you are and can ever be is because of God. You heard the testimony. Some people said, apostle prayed for me, prophesied. I came to submit to you that I have no hand in it. I prayed for many people and nothing happened. I prophesied over many people, nothing happened. The ones that happened, God made it happen. Without him, you can do nothing. My God, do you know how many people died today? I was listening yesterday and in Illinois, the governor of Illinois, United States of America said, in 2022 alone, over 22,000 people were killed by radical shootings in America, not Meduguri. People killed. They said it's now on a weekly basis. The evil and wickedness on the face of the earth. You don't know the things that happen for you to come here. You don't know the plots and the plans of the devil for you to end this week that you are still breathing. Are you just looking like that? Come on, lift your hands and worship this God. Hey, ah,
hands and thank this God. You are not here because you are smart. You are here because he said so. Did you see the brother that was shot at close range? The bone should have scattered. You call that a testimony because he walked into them. There are many more testimonies like that of people who missed them narrowly. They may never even know that why they went home safe was because God delayed them for two minutes and they missed narrowly. It is one out of us that met them that testified. They shot somebody, they clothed, got torn, but the bullet cannot hurt the flesh. My God. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We honor you. We magnify your name. Thank you for all you are doing. Hmm. He said, the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. Sometimes he reserves his mightiness until we gather. Until we are in a crisis, then he reveals his abilities. The Lord. Zephaniah 3.17 In the midst of his people is mighty. If you know where your enemies predicted you will be now. If you know. If you know what they have done for you to not be breathing now. If you know what was said about you. That you are still standing as if nothing is happening. Aliyah. There are many systems of advantage that you have in the spirit but one of the most potent is thanksgiving when you give thanks when you give thanks god is let loose to show his power and his excellencies some things are more powerful than prayer people don't know hey, instead of dealing with the mountains sometimes just thank god 
as you thank him he doesn't say anything his presence just comes there and then angels are mobilized angels of war beyond the mountain they will deal with the one that planted the mountain there are things more powerful than prayer when you thank god oh my god achieve in 10 years you are about to achieve it in one month there is a dimension of speed about to be activated on your life you may be an ordinary person until this service i prophesy over you as you lift your voice to thank god tonight go forward based on human connection no. a young lady walked up to me applying for visa since 2020 and she showed up in April she entered under the atmosphere and in two months visa that she has been applying for since 2020 they did not just give her the visa they gave her a job before she entered the country you think it's human connection you think it's a joke come on lift your voice and shout In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. We give you praise. This can't be one day. We will thank God for the whole of this month. Because a lot of things are about to begin to happen at the same time. A lot happening at the same time. That's what's about to begin to happen. How do you explain? A man who was pushing his car suddenly buys more than three vehicles in six months, pays for his own duplex, and he has money to spare. And it's not one million, it's not 10 million, it's not 20 million. How can such a change take place? How? You don't know anybody, you didn't meet anybody, but from the wings, the hand of God began to manipulate things. He began to manipulate him and suddenly, my God, Bate Ketoa, Ave Velaros Navata, Adiata Kumar. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I will prophesy over somebody today. But let me share some things with you. It will help, it will help your vision. You know, when we talk like this, somebody is thinking about a job. I'm applying for a job. I need one breakthrough or the other. You don't know what is about to happen. He said the wealth of the Gentiles is about to be shifted. The wealth. The things they gather. The things they gather for 10 years, for 20 years in wickedness. God is about to move it. Because the wealth of the church is a product of the transference of wealth. And in the name of Jesus, step into that affluence. Step into that.
that abundance. Step into that well. Take that dimension now. Most of you, very soon, people will look at you, they will testify that you don't look like what you used to be. Sit down for a moment. I want to close before 8.30. Ordinary men will become kingdom commanders. Ordinary men. Because something supernatural is about to happen. I just want to talk to you for 30 minutes or so on the power of thanksgiving. Every Sunday in this month we will have a, a guest. Let them come and cause us to and even the choir on ground we will praise God this month throughout because strange things are about to happen strange things we need to create the atmosphere for it very quickly why do we thank God I want to talk to you about the power of thanksgiving. I'll need to calm myself down so that I don't explode. And then manage the time. Can we celebrate God's servant minister or we? Great servant of God. This is not a singer. It's a witness. The story he told you, he said it casually. Those were the days of terrorizing Unimaid. They started from the north, where the fire is. So these are not flamboyant people walking in privileged places, just calling Jesus be praised. No. They were there in the heat of crisis. When Boko Haram started, they stood their ground and defended the integrity of God. They knew them as warriors of the kingdom. And they said their noise became too much. So they wanted to kill him. Let that thing happen. And you know if they say you have insulted their prophet or you have turned the Quran, even the governor of the state can't help you. If they accuse you with these two things, that you've turned the Quran or you have insulted their prophet, you are gone. But the Lord, in the midst of his people, July is a supernatural month for you. The first reason that necessitates thanksgiving is a realization that God is the one doing it. There is no man on earth that can do nothing without God. Spirit control this realm. And for those of us who are sons of light, we know that nothing happening around us is a coincidence. We know that it is the hand of God making things happen. It's not a joke. In Mark 16, 20, he said the Lord walking with them, confirming the world with signs and with wonders following. So they knew that they preached, but it was not their preaching that converted people. They knew they laid hands on the sick, but it was not just their laying on of hands that healed the sick. They knew they prophesied, but it was not their prophecies that made things happen. It was God confirming the words with signs and wonders. And so when Paul was speaking in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6, he said, Paul planted, Apollos watered. He said, but God is the one that gave the increase. Without God's impute in the equation, everything will be mere activities. In Psalm 127 from verse 1, the psalmist said, except the law builds the house. He said they labor in vain. They labor. Many are laboring in vain because they are still relying on their certificates. Many are laboring in vain because they are still relying on human connection. Somebody walked up to me and said he served a senator for more than four dispensations until the senator became a senate president. All the people he dashed houses, he handled it including some of the girls that he gave duplexes in Abuja serving the senate president yet a beggar 
had nothing, receiving salary of less than 50,000 for four decades. You will think you are connected to the Senate president. You can make things happen. Find out people that have not secured the help of God. They will tell you they can call the president now. Yet, they are languishing in pains and obscurity. Except the Lord builds a house. He says they labor in vain that builds it. In fact, in John 15 verse 5, Jesus himself speaking. He said, without me, you can do nothing. That means everything happening in and around your life is a testimony of the invincible finger of God. And so if you are wise and you are smart, when you see anything happen, you will tell God, Lord, I know I called somebody. Lord, I know I read a book. Lord, I know I presented a proposal. But over and above all I did, I know this is your finger. I can recognize it. I can recognize it because I have done this a thousand times. This one works because you put your hand. And if you want the hand of God to remain, what you do to keep it is by showing thanks. It's by giving thanks and it's by showing gratitude. This is why wise men know the way of thanksgiving. It's only the poor man that is too busy to thank God. Ask the rich, ask the wealthy, ask the influential. When you say it's an opportunity to thank God, even if they are not actively involved, they will participate in it. Because they know what can be activated when there is thanksgiving. People who go nowhere are full of arguments and lamentations. They are full of logic and criticizing. Checking all the facts. But they don't know how things work in this kingdom. The Bible said as the wind blew it. There is something that functions as the wind blew it. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it is going. Those are the things that change things in the natural. And when a man wants to remain a changer of things in the natural, he must understand the way of thanksgiving. If you study Psalm 114 from verse 1 to 8, we saw the great exploit that was wrought by the children of Israel. But the Bible told us the secret. It said when Israel came out of Egypt, it said Judah was his sanctuary. Israel was his dominion. He said the sea saw them and fled. Why did the sea flee? He said the mountains skipped like rams before them. And while the question was going on, why are these things happening? The earth itself began to educate mortals. He said, hear ye, O earth, tremble at the presence of God. It is the presence of God in their midst that is making things happen. And the reason those things are happening is because Judah was a sanctuary. Judah means praise. And so God dwelt in their praise. And so long as God dwelt in their praise, they didn't need to command the mountains. They didn't need to command the sea. The sea went back on its own accord. The reason we thank God is because we have judged ourselves in all sincerity and we say this thing happening is beyond us. It's not because we are smart. It's not because we are intelligent. Find men that struggle in life. They will tell you they pray so things happen. And when they pray, they pray into frustration. Find men that struggle in life. They will tell you they have scriptures. They will tell you they have connection. In addition to the prayer, in addition to the scripture, is the finger of God. Because there are many praying without acknowledging that God is the doer and they end up in frustration. There are many quoting scriptures without God's acknowledgement. They are frustrated. There are many people who have all the connections, they are frustrated. But you see somebody else with the little he knows, coupled with gr gratitude, he provokes results that is beyond human comprehension. And you ask how, why? Is because in addition to everything he knows, he knows that God is the one walking in the midst of his people. This is simple, but this is why many go nowhere. They don't have the culture and the consciousness of ascribing the glory to God. Even when they do, they do it religiously just because they are Christians and they need to say it. But when you argue with them, when you talk to them, the first thing they will reference, the second and the third, will be things apart from God. Some are even very spiritual things, but it's not God. And whatever it is you reference that is not God has already made you a failure. God must be number one and number last. He is the beginning and the end. There is no room to acknowledge any other thing apart from God. This is why we thank the Lord. See what God has done in five months. Sometimes when I imagine 
the trips I embark upon. I know the place of discernment, but lead me to my discernment, I will be wrecked. Do you know the plethora of warfare you are captured in in one week? I know sometimes we want to travel by discernment we seize. If it were for discernment alone, Paul, the mighty apostle, a young damsel met Paul carrying a diabolic spirit. Paul couldn't discern her. For many days, Paul acknowledged that lady to be a prophetess. Imagine the people that would have seen Paul with that woman and say even Paul, the great apostle, knows that this lady is a seer. It took many days before Paul's discernment was activated. Do you know the many other things that would have swallowed Paul because of slow discernment? That is what happens to us. We have been on flights that should have crashed. We have been in vehicles that should have crashed. With our teaching of discernment and the little discernment we had, we entered the wrong vehicles that would have crashed. But at some point, the mercy of God showed up. The mercy of God showed up. Because out of a hundred times, maybe you discern five times. And many times the devil will come when you didn't discern. Have you not seen great people that crashed? Have you not seen great people that failed? Do you think they don't have discernment? That one moment of failure in discernment can be when your arrow was shot. That is why it takes God to be victorious in this life. You say you are smart, you don't have an idea what is happening. I find myself sometimes in a week for 40 to 50 hours in the air. Just this weekend, on Thursday, I was in Egypt. Left Egypt to Dubai, ministered for 20 minutes, turned back, flew to Egypt and flew back to Nigeria between Friday and Saturday. And that may be the 20th flight I was on in that week. Do you think with that level of schedule, I can show up at the airport and stand like this? I say, I shouldn't enter this plane. You are joking. When you have to catch 14 flights in a week, you know that no matter how discerning you think you are, if God doesn't show mercy, you are finished. And then you show up, you don't ascribe the glory to God. You don't ascribe the glory. See the testimonies upon testimonies. These ones were censored. They had to even stop and say, we'll read out. And even at that, do you think these are jokes? You think because somebody has faith and he showed up and said, move forward. Without God, you will prophesy all your life and you will prophesy into obscurity and rejection. It takes God for things to happen. And because we know it takes God, every day of our life we show up and say, God, you know, we are just like puppets. It's just like this microphone I'm using. This microphone is only amplifying what I'm saying. Immediately I stop talking, the microphone stops working. That's how we are in the hands of God. We are doing nothing except as we are channeling what you are already doing. And anything it is you are not doing, no matter how we try, is a failure. And because we know this, we don't take for granted when it comes to giving thanks. Even if it's something that looks infinitesimal, we know that in all our skill and mastery, we cannot add one cubit to a man's hair. We know. We know too well how helpless and vulnerable we are with before God. When you find someone who can't thank God, he's still taking credit for the things happening in his life and wait for a while. Go and ask the Bukadnezar. When he showed up and said, this great nation, I built it with my hands. Suddenly, one of the watchers showed up and said, the most high rules in the affairs of men. And in seven years, a great king became a beast. After he came back from that journey, Nebuchadnezzar became a prophet. He said, I've seen that God is a ruler among men. He quickly ascribed the glory to God. You think you are the one doing what is happening. Go and ask Herod. Herod gave a speech and they clapped for him and said, what an oration. This is God talking. And Herod nodded his head. The Bible said immediately he was struck by an angel. Worms came out of him. That means apart from God, that was how good Herod was. A rotten and a decayed man. If God is withdrawn from you, you will see how naked and useless you are. This is why we thank God compulsorily. Because we know it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God. Why do we thank God? Number two, we owe him thanks. 
It is not voluntary. We owe it to him. Because even God knows that without him we are nothing. He chose to glorify himself through us. And he expects that we are reasonable enough to present thanks. In Luke 17 verse 17, when Jesus healed the ten leprous men, only one stranger came back and Jesus looked at them. He said, where are the nine? Were there not ten of you that were cleansed? I know people applied for the job. Seven of you were picked. But usually, it's strangers that come back to say thank you. Because Christians are too familiar. But God knows that we ought to. And so many times, if you don't come, he will ask why. The same way he asked them, where are the nine? That means he was waiting for ten people to come and give thanks. But only one was reasonable enough. In Malachi chapter 2, from verse 2 to 3, he said, because you did not take it to heart. Because you did not take it to heart to appreciate God. He said he will curse your blessings. He will curse it because you did not take it to heart. Thank God we are in the era of grace and God is not cursing men. But even at that, he expects that you should be wise enough to give thanks. Because if there is one thing you owe God, it's not prayer. Most times prayer is for your benefits and the benefit of people around you. If there is one thing you owe God and owe him exclusively, that thing is thanksgiving. But many times, we are indebted in the area of thanksgiving. Every time we open our mouth is to ask God for the many things he has not done. Whereas the million and billion things he has done, we forget to thank him for it. We are only conscious of the things that are yet to be done. And we are never thankful enough for the things that are already done. People need to repent. If God were not God, most of our prayers are highly irritating. Imagine you do something for somebody once, twice, thrice, and the fourth time the person appears, you think, finally, this person has become wise. And then he's still telling you that there is one more thing remaining. There will be indignation in your heart for that person. And that's how many believers are. They never prepare themselves to thank God because, number one, they've not acknowledged that God is the one doing it. They may say it religiously, but they truly don't acknowledge it's God. If you acknowledge that it's God, your attitude will be different. And number two, they don't know that they owe God thanks. The third reason why we give God thanks is because only in thanksgiving is glory ascribed to him. How else do you, thank, do you glorify God? It's when you publicly show up and say, listen, this thing happening. I know I studied in Harvard, but I know many Harvard failures. Listen, this thing happening. I know I'm in the city of Abuja, but I know many people failing in Abuja. I have no hand in what is happening. And you are not just saying it to look pious. You are saying it because you know and believe that's how it is. When you do that for the first time, people will look beyond you and appreciate the God behind the scene. When you refuse to give thanks and give thanks publicly, people will mistake you to be the source of what is happening. And the God that did it will be obscured. Even Jesus, while walking on the face of the earth, said, he said, I can of my own self do nothing. He said, the works that I do, the Father that is in me, he's the one that doeth the works. Because if he doesn't say it, you may take the glory that is due the Father and ascribe it to God. And so every time we thank God, we are creating an avenue for people to acknowledge the one who is really doing it. Have you seen people before? Somebody empowers them. Somebody places them. They do everything and they show up and act as if they are smart. When you find such people, kick them out. They are rebels. And that is how it, it happens in the kingdom of God. Never fail to make people know that beyond your intelligence there is an invisible hand making things happen that's when they will ask for your god if everything stops with you your god will become obscured and a generation will never worship him why do you think people worship god they worship god because they know that the glory and the excellence they see effusing out of our life is not our own doing and because it's not our own doing they want to look for the one who is doing it that is for the first time people will leave you and find your God. If you don't have the attitude of thanksgiving, people will be stuck to you and your God will be forgotten. And if your God is forgotten, you are in danger. Because in the day of delivery, 
you will discover that it's not your hand making it happen. That's the day you will repent, but it will be too late. When we thank God, we are causing glory to be ascribed unto him. When we give God thanks, we are making a bold statement that forget what you are saying. We are only a theater. The actor is the divine God. And so don't thank us, don't glorify us. Glorify the one that actually did it. We are just stewards. We are transmitters. Our generation will not worship God enough except as we thank him enough. Today, history is painted with how creative humankind is. History is painted with how great men are. History is painted with how powerful the wisdom of men are. But the God behind the scene has not been known. And the reason history is not a story of God, but the story of men, is because the men God used to make the impact, they decided to hide the God. And so when the stories are told, it's the story of those men that will be told. But when men honestly give God the glory through thanksgiving, history will no longer be about the story of men. History will become the story of God. This is why when you study the scripture, it is the only book that reveals the excellency of God. Because only those kinds of actors decided to step aside and allow God to be seen. And so when you study those men, you will see the God that made things happen. Check every other place. God is obscured because they are ungrateful men on the scene. A generation must repent from ingratitude. Thank God for your hard work. Thank God for your diligence. But I assure you, there are many more hardworking and diligent people than you. Thank God for your wisdom. I assure you, even in that locality where you are, if a census is taken, you will discover that you are probably the most daft among those making impact. The reason you are exalted is because there is an invincible God playing behind the scene. And until you make a generation see that God, that God will never be glorified. A generation will rise that will cause men to see the excellency of God and give him glory. This amongst many others are the reason we thank the Lord. Because we know and acknowledge he's the one making the difference. Number two, because we are reasonable enough to realize that we owe him thanks. And number three, because we know that that is the only basis for which he will be glorified. If God will be glorified in a generation, then thanksgivers must rise. Who tell the world openly, I'm not the one. The God behind the scene is the one you should appreciate. And people will begin to honor your God and acknowledge him. Giving him praise and giving him thanks. Daniel came and interpreted the dream intelligently. And when the king looked at him and said, what wisdom is this? He said, no, it's not me. Make no mistakes about it. He said, there is a God that revealed secrets. That God is the one that made things happen. If that God is removed, you will see how empty and naked Daniel is. And the next time they needed the services of Daniel, when his record was read, they didn't say Daniel the wise man. They said, in him is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. The reason he does what he does is because in him is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. The first time, they will make the mistake of glorifying you. But if they do it the second time, it means you are not grateful. They are permitted to make the mistake the first time. But you are expected to correct them. So that the second time they will look for your God, not you. And if they have to route your God through you, while they are engaging your God through you, they should be grateful to your God and not to you primarily. Because if your God is not there, you can never be there. Why do we give God thanks? Because we acknowledge he's the one making things happen. Why do we give God thanks? Because we are reasonable enough to know that we owe him thanks. And why do we give God thanks? We give him thanks because only on that basis will he be glorified. A generation is rising that is interested in applause. A generation is rising that is interested in being seen as superstars. And so when people show up, they tell you their record of fasting. They tell you their record of prayer. I was humbled after God decided to remove burdens from my heart. There was a season I fasted for five years, every day, morning to evening, every day for five years. And I stood up, I said, I'm a, I'm a fasting man. And God withdrew the grace of fasting. And suddenly I started struggling. Before it is 12 o'clock, I want to die of food. And I started wondering what went wrong. I realized I thought I was strong in myself. 
when God removed that burden and hunger for fasting, I realized that I was as weak as every other person who struggles to stay without food. And that is how it applies to every aspect of our lives. You will think you have mastered it. Wait until God removes his hand. And then you will discover how weak, naive, and vulnerable you are. God is the real actor. We are just screens through which the actor should be seen. If the actor is obscured, then the whole process is an error. Thanksgiving is a testimony in the spirit of loyalty and devotion to the God of heaven. What are the effects of thanksgiving? The first aspect is God-oriented, but the second aspect is oriented towards us. When we give thanks, we don't just acknowledge God. God uses it as a system for our advantage. Yes, thanksgiving exalts and glorifies him, but because of his benevolence, when we start giving him thanks, instead of receiving all to himself, he reprograms it to make for our advantage. And so you thank God for one as you are going out to see ten. You now thank him for ten as you are going out to see hundred. You thank him for hundred as you are going out to now see one thousand. And you say, what is going on? I thought I'm thanking you so that you be glorified. In glorifying God, he glorifies you. That's what the love of God provokes. And this is why men who want to keep their greatness, one of the keys of routing it is thanksgiving. Five effects of thanksgiving. Number one. Number one, thanksgiving provokes increase. You, 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 you see certain people, it looks as if God is biased towards them. There is something they know. Every time, time a man begins to give thanks and give thanks consciously, he opens many channels and many tributaries. Even the economists know that one stream of income is not guaranteed. When you find a man who is established, he has many streams of income. The spiritual way of engendering many streams is through thanksgiving. In Acts chapter 2 verse 47, see what the apostles did. They wanted increase. They wanted expansion. They wanted breakthrough. And unfortunately, Jesus was gone. There's nobody to prophesy over them. You know, when you are somebody who is pastor's boy, or prophet's son, or apostle's disciple, all the time, everything about your life, you want him to prophesy. The day God makes you a leader, you will now understand that that channel you were using is for children. Because him, who will prophesy for W.F. Kumuyi now? Who will lay hands on him? Who will now come and look at Pastor E. Adeboe and lay hands on him and say every month I lay hands on you? Such people are no more. So they need to know something that works beyond laying on of hands. And that is the place the apostles were. They were direct disciples of Jesus. Now Jesus is gone. There's no senior apostle to lay hands on them. There's nobody to prophesy over them. They needed technologies of the spirit that we make for sustenance of what was happening when Jesus was with them. Remember, when Jesus was with them, everywhere they went, there was multitude. There was increase. Now Jesus is no more. Nobody knows them. And they need to sustain that level of multitude. The Bible said, as they gathered together, they praised God and gave thanks and he said daily God added to the church such as should be saved so when you came into their congregation you couldn't tell the difference between when Jesus was present in the body and when Jesus was absent in the body because they had built a technology that 
caused Jesus to be walking with them as though he was still present. He had bodily gone to heaven, but the impact remained. And the way they sustained that impact of extraordinary increase was through thanksgiving. As they gave thanks, they kept increasing. As they gave thanks, they kept increasing. Every time a man gives thanks, he makes himself a candidate of ever increasing breakthroughs. There is something that makes a man to keep becoming bigger and bigger. The name is thanksgiving. Jesus himself, in John chapter 6 verse 11, he had taught for three days. They were in the wilderness. There's no company that can provide resources. There was no money anywhere to buy it. And even if the money was there, you couldn't generate food enough for five million men. How do you start? Five thousand men. Which company can produce that emergency bread? But Jesus knew a technology. The Bible said he lifted up his hands. When they gave him five loaves and two fish, he lifted up his hands and he said he thanked the Father. When he was done thanking the Father, he gave them the bread. He said, distribute it. And they will break it. It will multiply. They will break it. It will multiply. This is why the apostles knew that when we thank God, we are provoking multiplication. Because the miracle for the first time didn't happen in the hands of Jesus. They were used to seeing the miracle in the hands of Jesus. Now in their own very hands, the miracle was happening. What did Jesus do that made the miracle to start happening with everybody? He gave thanks. And so when you want to see what is happening with you, replicated across board, start giving thanks. The more people give thanks, the more multiplication becomes a natural product in their life. And this is not just about material things, even in spiritual things. Go for a meeting and thank God and see what he does. Then go back the next day. You will go back the next day dry, empty, because they've drawn from you. But many times you'll be amazed that the second day after giving thanks is when you have greater results. Because when you give thanks, you provoke multiplication. You may have one business begin to give thanks and you will wonder the level of wisdom that will come to you. And in one month, two months, three months, you open three, four other businesses. And people are wondering, how are you doing it? I am thanking God. It looks weak, but this is where the powers of the kingdom are invested. If, I tell, if you look at believers who are dry, I can tell you many times the reason is because there's no thanksgiving in their lives. When you start thanking God from nothing, something can be created. And if you have something already, it can easily be multiplied. Thanksgiving is a multiplier in this kingdom. This is why wise men have always flooded with thanksgiving. In Jeremiah 30 verse 19, it says, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice that makes merry and he said and i will multiply them and they shall not be few and i will also glorify them and they shall not be small i will multiply them they shall not be few i will glorify them they shall not be small what increases men both quantitatively and qualitatively is thanksgiving greatness is qualitative increase multitude is quantitative increase both of them engendered by thanksgiving if they will thank me i will multiply them i will increase them i will make them great it's a secret in the kingdom when the people of the world do things and we do things they are different i was telling them in endugu i said when people gather in the world and they are shouting check it's pleasure they are excited so it's pleasure that provokes their shout but i say when you come into the kingdom and we are shouting we don't shout because we are happy we don't shout because we are excited in addition to being happy and being excited when we want wars to go down we shout because when you shout jericho we go down and so when you find believers shouting they may not be excited but shouting is something beyond excitement it is at the world level that excitement is a product of pleasure in the kingdom excitement shout thanksgiving is a weapon when we shout, there's a Jericho about to go down. There may be somebody or something you are contending with. You have prayed. You have fasted. It's not working. Go and wear a shirt and a boxer. Lock your door. If you don't know how to sing, get the two of a minstrel and play some praise. By the time you are done dancing and shouting and singing, you will come out, number one, you will forget about the problem. And you will see that the effect of this forgetfulness is not like liquor. 
because an alcoholic forgets for a moment, he comes back to the challenge. But in this case, you will forget about the problem. And when you show up the next time, you will break into extraordinary resort. And yourself will wonder, how did this thing happen? The glory of God came down. Because the shout of the king is in the midst of our people. And when it comes down, every mountain goes back. When it comes down, every sea goes back. When you don't know how to give thanks and do it consciously, wait for a while. Drought will surround you. With your capital letter tongues, you will be shocked that there are many prayer warriors who are failure. With your many scripture quoting, you will quote 1,000 scriptures and be shocked that there are many people who know the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, but they are still in drought because they don't know the things that work for our advantage. One of the ways to add value to your prayer and to your scripture is to add the voice of thanksgiving because God has made it his own responsibility. He said, when they praise me and they thank me, I will multiply them, they will not be few. I will exalt and glorify them, they will not be small. That means when you start thanking God, the whole responsibility he takes over it. In prayer, we share the responsibility with God. We bear the bodies, he answer. In thanksgiving, God takes the responsibility. Have you not read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20? He said, believe in, your, in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye prosper. Prophet prophesied, nothing happened. When they were about to go into the battle, God now showed up and said, there is something you do that gets me committed. Get the singers, get the minstrels, put them in front and let them sing. And the Bible said, as they began to sing, as they began to shout, it said the army of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir turned against themselves and they destroyed themselves. The last man standing that should have run away, carried a spear and killed himself. When Israel showed up, they met this boy. There is a way to fight without fighting. There is a way to enter the battle. And instead of fighting, you will take the sport. It's a way of thanksgiving. Because when you give thanks, angels go ahead of you. Yeshu. because you enjoy them that is pleasure when you become mature you sing songs because you want to fight because you will select your songs carefully when you want to war there are some songs that when you start singing angels go to walk there are certain songs when you sing you activate the jealousy of God there are certain songs that when you sing, you provoke the integrity of God. God may not remember that 10 years ago, he promised you that nobody will bring you down. And you are going down and it looks as if God has forgotten. That's why God said, put me in remembrance of my word. I am not forgetful, but sometimes you have to remind me. And so when you are going down, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have caused that scripture, it's not working. Then you start saying, where is the God of Elijah? Where is the God? Where, where is he? Where is he? Then suddenly, suddenly, you activate the jealousy of God. There is a way to be invincible. It's a way of thanksgiving. Many can't thank God because you can't take credit in thanksgiving. When you pray, you can come and say, I pray for 20 hours. When you thank God, what did you do? You did nothing. You just awoken the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when they start fighting, many times he will go beyond your expectation. And then people will look at you and say, Ah, but you are not yet a graduate. They gave a friend of mine an honorary doctorate degree recently. He is not a graduate. You don't have to graduate from the university to have a PhD because there is another route. While you are in 200 level, somebody shows up and says your impact in society is too much. Take PhD. How shall these things be? I have been to school for more than 25 years. I don't have a PhD yet. I'm still waiting for ASU to call off strike to do my external defense. My brother routed it from 200 level. He's in 200 level and he entered PhD. 
my God, my God, my God. It's not impossible. You don't just know what to do. And one of the ways to activate unfathomable dimensions of God is by provoking the way of thanksgiving. That company that took you 10 years to build can become three in two months. And then you are wondering, how do you compare 10 years with two months? You gave thanks. You gave thanks. That certificate you have kept for 10 years, you can activate thanksgiving. And suddenly, you have something in two months that is superior to the 10 years of waiting. How shall these things be? There are dynamics in the spirit. You want to see extraordinary increase? Just thank God. You will know the word of no limits. The word that have no regard to limitation. Thanksgiving provokes that word. It provokes it. I know prophets have prophesied over you. Apostles have laid hands on you. Teachers have taught you. And pastors have acted as good shepherds. But it's time for you to do something. Thank God for the apostles and prophets. Now you have to lock your door. And enter your room. And enter your room. And when you sit down for a while. You will count your blessings. When you are done counting it. You will keep the blessings on the ground. And you will start. Who has the final say? You are going to your shop. People are there talking. Look at her. She will soon fail. She thinks there's something special. And then you come home. Lord, what did I do to these people? You start your ministry. Some people gather and say, Don't worry. He will soon go down. Lord, what did I do? Instead of pitying yourself and lamenting over yourself, come back to your room and say, Wamulele, Wamulele, Mura, Baraka, Miyelezu. yourself is this how i'm going to die no 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 that's the wrong thought when you look at yourself tell yourself god is about to use me to do a wonder god is about to turn me to a wonder and then when you lie down the bed you watch and you say Gender's multiplication. Listen, nobody on earth, listen, men can deceive themselves. Men can feel somebody may want to act proud and arrogant and look at you and say you are finished. He's a joker. No man on earth has the power to conclude on another man. He said, Who is it that saith a thing and a comment to pass when the Lord has not come? See. I know too much to pray about bad wishes. I know too much to pray about curses. I know too much to pray about evil prophecies. I am too significant in the hand of God.
to waste because of a man's sentiment. You can say whatever you want. It's down the line. It means nothing. I'm too significant. Are you a fly? Somebody wakes up and says, if I want, it's finished. Who are you? You don't know what you are talking about. I don't need to pray about it. I never need to pray about what people think. I know too much. My life is a drink offering. I know too much to pray. He said, he said, surely they shall gather. He said, it's not by my, it's not by me. It's every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. He said, the enemy may come in. He said, but as a flood, the spirit of God will lift up a standard against them. Who is it that said and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not commanded? What are you talking? Gather together, you will scatter. Take counsel together. It shall come to know. Speak the word. It shall not stand for our God is in our midst. And how does our God come into our midst? Hey! My destiny will not fail because of your sentiment. No. No. Just this weekend, I flew 22 hours to preach the gospel. 22 hours. And I got over 200 people to begin to pray every day for one hour for Dubai. You, do you know the kingdom we are in? Sit down. I'm about to start prophesying. They say you will not get married. Hear me. Before this year is over, before this year is over, you will settle down with the man God ordained for you. You will settle down with the woman God ordained for you. They say your life will come for nothing. Hear me. Hear me. The victory might not blossom. There might be no listen. Oh my God, I'm wasting time. In the name of Jesus, go forward and prosper. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed him. So was our mouth full of laughter. In the name of Jesus, your mouth shall be full of laughter. Before this year is over, he said he lifted the beggar from the donkey and raises him to stand and inherit thrones. In the name of Jesus, rise up from your obscurity and rule among the captains of the world. Every sickness that has threatened your life, I come as one sent. In the name of Jesus, by the priesthood of Melchizedek, I decree that sickness ends now. That sickness ends now. Receive your health in Jesus' name. I'm seeing an oil for wealth flow in somebody's hands. You may have come from a background of abject poverty. Now, in the name of Jesus, I make you rich. Go forward and prosper. I speak over your life as an apostle sent of God. I make you rich by the Spirit. I'm seeing somebody all your life you have been earning in Naira and you have never exceeded thousands in the name of Jesus before this month is over you begin to earn in dollars
by the Spirit. Most of you doors have been shut against you. You have tried everything, no door has opened. In the name of Jesus, those doors are not only opening, gates have been broken for you. Step into the city and eat the good of the land. Step into the city and eat the good of the land. In the name of Jesus. Except I am not sent. Before this year is over, before this year is over, everyone connected now by faith, enter the realm of millions. of the enemy have stifled your work with God. Prayer has become a body. Fasting has become a body. It looks as if God no longer answers prayer. I came to tell you that God answers prayers. And everything you have been trusting God for, in the next 21 days, receive your turn around. Receive your turn around. Receive your turn around. In the name of Jesus. lost his consecration now I speak encounters over you receive encounters that provoke hunger and fear for the Lord step into a deeper realm of intimacy contracts have been pending doors opening have been pending they have promised you again and again and again I stand on the premise of the calling of God and I decree right now Everything that have suffered a delay, let them open now. Most of you, the crown of greatness is coming on you. What we are talking about is beyond breakthrough. It's stepping into deeper realms of faith and the experience of God. A stepping into deeper realms of authority in the kingdom of God. And in the name of Jesus, every hand lifted and every heart connected on ground online. Receive those dimensions. Aliyah! have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has occurred to the heart of man. Thirty years stagnation is just ended now. Strange oppressions of the spirit begin to happen in your life. He said when the spirit be poured upon us from on high, the wilderness shall be turned to a fruitful field and a fruitful field shall be counted for a forest. Some of you who were barren and wilderness, you are not just becoming a fruitful field. You move straight to becoming a forest. 
in chemistry there is what we call sublimation a gas will turn to liquid before it turns to stone but there's a technology there are certain substances that sublime they move straight from a gas to a stone and they move straight from a stone to a gas from a solid to a gas in the name of Jesus the speed of sublimation routes you from your drought to your abundance receive it now thank you father some of you your very essence is changing because the reason you are where you are is not the devil is you weakness lasciviousness indiscipline lack of diligence you are the cause for your crisis but now because of mercy i speak to your being i speak to your essence let that essence negating your progress be altered in the name of jesus from today your life become an endless stream of testimonies an endless stream of testimonies in the name of jesus oh time is gone sit down for a moment strange men are about to begin to rise in our midst strange men strange men thanksgiving is the secret of unexplainable multiplication it will just be increasing you cannot explain it even you that is happening to you will not be able to explain it you just keep growing from glory to glory from glory to glory people will look at you and say no at this pace he can't go far your life will keep proving them wrong again and again and again it's the secret weapon of thanksgiving number two thanksgiving engenders deliverance i'm trying to speed up now so you have it it will help your understanding so you can apply your faith correctly it doesn't matter where you were when you start thanking god you can get to where you ought to be in Acts 16 25 paul and barnabas were in prison they came to their end but the Bible said at midnight, they prayed and they sang praises. Suddenly, it said the glory of God hit the building. From the foundation, the doors opened on their own accord. There is no case that is hopeless with God. And the way you bring God on the scene is by thanking him. When you start thanking God, he's a master of turning hopeless situation, situations around. In John chapter 11 verse 40, Lazarus was sick and he died and he was buried and he started decaying and Jesus showed up I know I'm a prophet but this is not time to prophesy I know I have faith but this is not time to start with faith he said he lifted up his eyes and from verse 41 he said I thank you oh father that you always hear me the moment he was done thanking God he said roll away the stone Lazarus comfort and the bible said he that was dead came back to life when you thank god there is no such thing as hopeless you can command your weakness and adversary to turn around when you are done thanking god this is why they were listen there are certain weapons in this kingdom that never fails thanksgiving is one of them a dead decayed came back to life because the weapon of thanksgiving was deployed you don't know why you struggle you are waiting for god to do what he has not done and you have not thanked him enough for the one he's already done that's why we struggle most of the time but from today no one among us will struggle number three because of our time thanksgiving creates an atmosphere for the miraculous you want your life to be a perpetual stream of the miraculous just start thanking god and see the enormous things that happens like joke most times when i go to meetings and i want to see crazy things happen i take time to thank god you will see terrible things happening like joke i just quoted for you from john 11:40 to 43 how that jesus thanked god and immediately the dead came back to life 
I also quoted up for, for you from John 6, 11, how Jesus lifted up his voice and thanked God and suddenly bread began to multiply. It was like play. But the bread kept multiplying. You can be singing and dancing, playing, and it will be happening. Because you have created and cultured an atmosphere for the miraculous. Anything and everything happens under that atmosphere. When we are done thanking God here, we can call anybody, just anybody, to come here and make a declaration. You will be shocked what will happen. Things that he has never seen, but that atmosphere becomes a provoker of the supernatural. Thanksgiving provokes the miraculous. And number four, Thanksgiving establishes you. Everything God is doing for you cannot be consolidated except as by Thanksgiving. This is why the fathers of old started doing mid-year Thanksgiving and end-of-year Thanksgiving to establish whatever it is God has done over the years. I quoted for you already from Luke 17, 17, when Jesus healed them, nine left, one came back. He said, where are the nine? He said, they didn't show up. The only one that came back, Jesus said, go, your faith has made you whole. He was the only one that was made whole. When you see a leprous person, leprosy eats off their body. And so when they are healed, what happens is that the wound is healed, the leprosy is gone, but the hand that is eating remains eating. When Jesus said, be made whole, those hands grew back. So what Thanksgiving does is that it makes you whole and it establishes you. Anything God is doing with you that you want consolidated, the key for making that happen is through Thanksgiving. Very quickly, how do you give thanks? Number one, you give thanks through a heart posture of gratitude. Thanksgiving does not begin with an action. It begins with a heart posture. There are many people who don't sustain that heart posture. God has done so much for them, they can't see it. And every time you see them, they're asking God why. You are asking God why and you are healthy. Visit the hospital and see if your question is valid. Some people have been bedridden for the past two years. They've never stood up. They don't even know what it feels like to walk anymore. Some people have been in coma for eight months. They put something on their nose and they are feeding them with food. You are healthy. You are asking God why. The hospital will show you how irrelevant your question is. They can't thank God because they feel what God is doing is too insignificant. This is why they will never go anywhere. Thanksgiving begins with a hard posture. I have been in the worst end of my life before. And while I'm there, no hope from any corner. I say, thank you, Lord. We don't thank God because we are happy. We thank God to become happy. We don't thank God because things are happening. We thank God to make things happen. This is why regardless of your situation, you thank God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4, he said, Give thanks to God in all situations, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In all things, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, In all things, give thanks. We don't give thanks because things are well. We give thanks to make things well. People who don't know what thanksgiving is, their heart posture is full of murmuring, lamentation, fear, and bitterness. That's why they can never thank God. You want to begin to thank God, work on your heart posture. Always be grateful with the little you have, and then you prepare yourself for multiplication. Number two, how do you thank God? You thank God through utterances of praise. Utterances. Sorry, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, not 24. You thank God through utterances of praise. Be conscious to give him glory with your words. In Psalm 105, verse 1 to 2, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds amongst the people. Make known. Make known. God may have done something at that in six months, maybe it's one thing you recognize. Speak about it. Speak about it in so much gratitude and joy and watch God do things you can no longer talk about. Make known his deeds. Utterances are channels through which thanksgiving is generated. Number two, Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4. He said, and in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord. 
call upon his name declare his doings among the people make mention of his name and exalt it God cannot be exalted except as you use your words to exalt him in first Chronicles 29 verse 20 he said and David said to all the congregation now bless the Lord your God now bless now bless the Lord your God it's possible for you to forget to thank him he said now bless him it's not all emotional all the time it's a conscious thing every day I wake up the first thing I say is thank you Jesus I don't know where I went to in my dream I have seen people before who woke up and choked to death I've seen people who slept woke up with cancer I've seen people who, who slept woke up took a shower and drove into an accident I wake up I say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus and sometimes this night you wake up from you didn't sleep when you travel across time zones <laughs> you will know what it means to to be happy for a good sleep you will fly from a country 6 a.m you will enter another country 4 a.m in the morning you are traveling backward in time meanwhile both countries are not your country so when you now check your time at home you discover it's 4 a.m in the morning meanwhile your body is active you think David said, give thanks. Be deliberate, be conscious. You don't have to feel it. But when you do it, it changes things. In Psalm 96 verse 3, it said, declare his glory among the hidden, his wonders among all people. Even among the hidden, be bold to say, my God is good. My God is great. The sons of the bond woman know it. Their salutation is to declare God as great. Allah Wakbar. Anywhere they go to, they first of all say God is great. It doesn't matter what they are going through. They begin by declaring. Only the Christian forgets to declare the greatness of God. You thank God with your words. Number three, how do you thank God? You thank God through a dogged life of service. Committed service to his name. In 2 Corinthians 5.14, Paul said that that he died for us we no longer live for ourselves but for him that died for us the love of christ constrained us for we thus judge that if he died for us we no longer live for ourselves so one of the way you show thanks is to become doggedly committed to the service of god and i was sharing with somebody yesterday what the holy ghost told me he said don't find yourself in a church or in a fellowship where they don't motivate you to pray they don't motivate you to give and they don't motivate you to win souls. These are three potent ways of showing your commitment to God. But I can show you how ungrateful our generation is. These three things, they never do it. Get them together to pray. That's the hardest thing. Because their strength is still in themselves. When you know that you depend on God completely, prayer will become bread for you. Because you know outside God, you are finished. When you truly know that it's God blessing you, your resources will first of all be on his altar. That's why Jesus said, where a man's heart is, that is where his treasures are. Our generation is not thankful. That's why we can't give. In fact, on this matter, God is jealous. In Malachi chapter 1 verse 8, he said, will you go to give to your governor a blind goat? He said, but you bring unto me torn currencies. On the matter of giving thanks, as a sign of service and commitment to God, he is jealous over it. We are not thankful. Somebody comes to church after 168 hours of preservation. In that 168 hours, he made 10 million. But when he wants to give a worship offering, he squeezes 2,000 and drops it. And then he'll come back and say, God is the one prospering me. You are a liar. Even you know it's not God. If I give you 100 million, if I give you 10 million, even if it's 100,000 I give you, will you give me 2,000 as a sign of honor? Will you give me 2,000? The hardest thing for us to give is offering. You can just call your friend and say, you know, get a charge card, relax, and load him 10,000. But when you want to load your offering, it's 2,000, it's 1,000. And when they say it, they say church is taking money from people. Trying to turn a generation against God. That is why our generation is becoming more godless and ungodly. We can't thank God. And then through 
the service of soul winning. Somebody is healthy for 168 hours in a week. He can't deploy two hours to talk to somebody about Jesus. Even when you create a system to help them talk to people about Jesus, they don't have the time. Out of 168 hours. This is why the Western world today is godless. Tell them, let's pray. They say, wait, let's check our itinerary. And people are choosing time of prayer based on when they are free. And they'll tell you, no, no, they like to keep to appointment, so they have to get when they are free. So their spare time is for God. They use their valuable time for their first God, which is their job and their families. Service to God through prayers, giving, and soul winning is a sign that you are truly thankful. You tell God that my health, my time, and everything I have you gave me, nothing is too big to give me in return. Either by my time in prayer, or by my finances that you have helped me to get, or by going out to tell people about your greatness. It's not too much. It's the third way to give thanks. Number four, the fourth way to give thanks is to present gifts unto him. It is ingrained in the culture of men that every time they are grateful, the first way they show it is by gifts. And that culture, first of all, is from God. You show your love and gratitude through gifts. But people can't give. Now, when I announced this Thanksgiving service last week Sunday, I didn't tell anybody to bring anything. I wanted to understand the level of maturity of the brethren. Whether somebody who sells rice can say, no, I must present this rice before the Lord. He's the owner and bring it. Whether somebody who works in a financial institution can take a, a, a portion of the money and say, no, I count money here every day. I have some. I present to God. Whether somebody who farms can take something I say and present to God and then dress consciously in a way of gratitude, coming to tell God, you gave me this, I brought this back. I watch to see. To see the level of maturity. If you cannot consciously begin to present gifts to God, it means you and God know that it's not your source. And it may not be declared now, wait until the day of trouble. You will call him my Lord and my God. He will say, who are you talking to? You have never proven it to me. I don't know what you are talking about. The last time you went to see your governor, I saw how you went. I don't know what you are saying. Thanksgiving. There's a way we thank God. And it's deliberate. And finally, the way we thank God is through singing and dancing. Psalm 105, verse 1 and 2. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto the Lord. Sing psalms unto his name. When we sing, when we dance, we dance before God. Forgetting our class, forgetting our reputation is a sign of gratitude. When David was dancing before the ark, he went naked. Ah! And Micah, Saul's daughter, looked at him and said, Ah, ah, are you not a king? Where is your gravity? How can a king be dancing like a child? And David looked at her and saw her as one of the foolish women. He said, your father Saul did not make me king. Before God, I am a child. And so when I come before the Lord, I can kneel down, I can lie down, I can sing, I can shout. I may be a governor before the people, not before God. Before God, there is one governor of the universe, the one that sits upon the clouds. I'm not a governor there. I can be a father in my family. When all of us come before God, we are children. Nobody is a grandchild of God. We are all children. And so all of us, we behave like one. This is how people who are thankful do. But you come to our churches today. The big brothers. That's the way they dance. When God brings his shoulder, since you want to shake shoulder, <laughs> your shoulder may crash forever. You need to know how to do these things. Because there are many advantages tied to them. And beyond the advantages, the ultimate thing about thanksgiving is that it gives us the opportunity to glorify God. You want your life to constantly glorify God. You do it through thanksgiving. Can you rise up to your feet? One more time. Lift your hands up to heaven and give the Lord thanks. Maybe you have a thanksgiving offering and you want to give it to the Lord. And maybe you didn't know this before now, but now you have been taught. 
David knew it so well. He said, I will not give God that will cost me nothing. He knew it so well. I will not give God that will cost me nothing. What I want to give God must cost me something. This God is too good. He made me a king. He has preserved me. Can you lift your hands? You have an offering or you have something you want to thank the Lord with. You can bring it to the altar. You didn't know. Don't put yourself under pressure. Now you know. Next time when you hear there is thanksgiving. Even if it is in a, an uncompleted beauty. Go there with your substance. The Bible says to honor the Lord with your substance. And with the first fruit of all your increase. We are rounding up now. We are rounding up now. Tuesday is Bible study. Monday we pray. I will call the minstrel up to lead us in praise for five minutes. As we do that, you have something you want to thank the Lord. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.